Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good grief. It is such a pleasure to be here on Fight Back 2020. Again, my name is William Austin. Fight Back 2020 is a production of Fight Back Media, fightbackmedia.com. That's fightbackmedia.com. You can go there and you can check out all the things that we do, links to, links to everything, links to the people who support us. As a matter of fact, this particular episode of uh, Fight Back 2020 is sponsored by two great local companies. The first is my friend, my sweetheart, uh, um, Christine Vasconcello. <laughs> I threw myself off. Christine Vasconcello is a Blooming Days Flower Shop. Blooming Days Flower Shop is, is located at 11... Make sure you get the address right. 11618 North Florida Avenue here in Tampa, Florida. The website is www.bloomingdays.com the phone number is 813-933-1942 and uh, right now if you order online uh, an arrangement of $100 or more you can get 10% off just enter the uh, the code um, it's what make sure I get it right it is make sure I get it right 10 no it's the code is 10 off F L W R that's 10 off F-L-W-R, 10 off flowers. So there you go. And um, the other sponsor um, today is, wouldn't be able to do it without them, is my friend Chuck, Chuck Guthrie at Computers Plus in Brandon. They're at 108 West Windhorst Road in Brandon. Um, that's just west of um, Parsons there. Go across the railroad track up to Windhorst, make a left. They're on the north side of the street. In Brandon, Florida, the number there is 813-685-4432. Um, Guthrie's Computer Plus and uh, Bloomingdale's Flower Shop. The best. The absolute best. And that's what it's all about, folks. we got to help each other. All right. Today, we're going to talk about a couple a couple things on this particular uh, broadcast. We have to talk about coronavirus because it's what we have to talk about. And we're going to go through some, we're going to go through some of the numbers. Uh, of where we are now uh, with the virus worldwide. Yes, at the beginning of the day, with over 900,000 um, confirmed cases, we were going to hit a million at some point, and certainly did today. And it was a big news point. There were over a million cases. Well, there were going to be. Um, and then we're going to talk about something that uh, a lot of a lot of the major news people aren't going to talk about. That's what we do here at Fightback 2020. Um, we're going to talk about a lot of things that they won't do, that they won't talk about. We're going to talk about China opening up their wet markets again. Uh, are, are, are we blaming China? Yes. Yes. This mess started in China, and the CCP, Chinese Communist Party, uh, covered this crap up, fudged the numbers, um, lied to the World Health Organization, all that stuff. Yes. Yes, we are blaming China. We're blaming actually the Communist Party of China. We're not blaming... Now, let me get cl closer to you so you understand what I'm saying. We're not blaming the Chinese people. We're not blaming the, the Chinese-American person walking down the street of San Francisco. No, because that would be stupid. And that would be dumbass. And if you're and now, if you're a person who's going to blame the average China person, person from China walking down the street in your city, and blame them, unless they're a leader in the in the Chinese Communist Party, then you're a dumbass too. So stop it. All right. Um, there you go. And for, and for you people who are finding videos of Chinese people doing horrible things um, at stores around the country and posting those videos. You're the ones who are, who are inciting violence against Chinese people, so why don't you stop that crap, too? But the Chinese Communist Party, the Chinese government, uh, they do have responsibility here. Um, so we're going to talk about the uh, what the, uh, the wet markets are. We're going to talk about um, something that I thought was really, really funny that Lindsey Graham said. I, I'm sorry, I thought it was funny, you know, and you will think it's funny too. Um, and we're going to talk about ballot harvesting. We've already seen calls for um, the whole change our November elections and, and of course, the all the, the leading up primaries to vote by mail only. 
Well, because that'll that coincides with social distancing. Although I was in, I voted in in the, in the Florida primary, and and where I was, and there were I don't know, six people, five of them workers, and myself, and I wasn't ever ever within five feet of anybody in the place. And I think those kind of social distancing guidelines can be can be kept. So I don't think it's it's necessary to um, switch completely over to a system that I think is fraught with fraud, fraught. And um, we're going to get um, some information from some people at the um, at Judicial Watch, uh, a video they did about evidence of the possibility of fraud in a nationwide vote by mail system or ballot harvesting. Now, ballot harvesting is when you take your absentee ballot, instead of putting it in the mailbox, a a political operative comes by and picks it up from your house and takes it to the polling place. Are you good with ballot harvesting? Well, after you see this piece, Maybe you'll have questions. And golly, if I can just get you to have questions and then ask those questions out loud, we have we will have done our job here at Fight Back 2020. Um, we're going to start off with um, some of the numbers. And the numbers this evening, frankly, are hard to hear. I mean, they just are hard to hear. Let me get my notes here. So I'll have to be looking off. Look at that, notes. Um, this morning at 1 a.m., the world death rate to coronavirus was at 5.23%. That's not good. Not by any stretch of the imagination, that's not good. Um, So we are not, we've not turned the corner as far as the planet goes. We have not. Even with all the measures, even with all the shutdowns and lockdowns, we have not turned the corner. Um, As of... 2229 that's 1029 here on the east coast um some nine or ten out ten and a half hours later the world death uh death rate is at 5.38 percent it's actually ticked up a little bit so again we are not we have not reached the apex and we've not turned the corner in this thing on a um international basis on i mean level unfortunately at this point here in the united states at 1 a.m. Why? Because I was up at 1 a.m. and I took these numbers, this measure personally. Um, 2.48 was the death rate. 2.48 percent of people who actually got the virus um, have passed away, unfortunately. Um, and as of 10:30 um, this evening here on the East Coast, um, that's ticked up to 2.66 percent. Here in, in the state of Florida, where I live, at 1 a.m., the death rate was 1.5%, and and some 10 hours later, um, it is at 1.65%. It's ticked up a little bit. Um, Florida is, was 11th in total deaths in the country, and it is now 10th in total deaths in the country. Um, New York, if you're if you're curious, New York has had at 1 a.m a 2.72% death rate, and right now at 10.30 um, on the East Coast, it is at 3.10%. So we are not at the apex, it seems, and it seems like we are not turning the corner, at least not for now. Um, now, some all, some information that you're also not going to hear from mainstream media is this. Have you, again, I need you to ask questions. I need you to think about these questions. I need to ask these questions. Have you heard of whatever whatever the regular seasonal flu death numbers are? Have, is anybody talking about that? No, they're not talking about that. Um, we have information here that some of these death, some of these numbers, some of the, some of the death toll that's, that's being tossed in the corona are people who have, who are had the um, the seasonal flu? The seasonal flu is a deadly thing and kills a lot of people who have Im- immune um, compromised systems. Their 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 immune systems are compromised. 
a lot of elderly people, and it also kills a lot of kids too, you know, babies, that kind of thing. So uh, can we find a way to separate these numbers? These are the questions that we need to be asking our leaders, these people, these, we need to be asking our, um, our, 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 our health officials, can we separate those numbers so we can see exactly what we're looking at? Uh, because right now, emotionally, people, we're looking at coronavirus, 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 coronavirus is the cause of everything. Coronavirus is the cause of every death of every celebrity. Uh, you know, Bill Withers died Monday, right? And of course, he died Monday. It's Friday. So I see on Twitter and I see on, on, the, on the AP that um, Bill Withers died. Well, why didn't I hear about it Monday when he passed away? Why did I hear about it Friday? And I can only come to the conclusion is because it wasn't connected to it wasn't connected to COVID nineteen. He had heart disease and he died from complications from heart disease. And he was eighty one years old. Eighty kills a lot of people, y'all. Um, it, it it does. Eighty kills a lot of people. So it is. Um, those are the numbers. That's what we're dealing with. Um, so if it's okay that if you ask if the the, the measures that your city, your town are taking, it's okay if you ask, if they if, are they being effective? We're being told that this is the your only tool. Well, it's a pretty crappy tool. Uh, sequestering people in their homes for an undetermined amount of time. It's not a good tool. It's my opinion, and it's only my opinion, and I can state my opinion because this microphone belongs to me and so does this camera, is that at some point, people are just going to say, screw it. You can't keep people, can't keep Americans sequestered in their home for an undetermined amount of time. Nobody can. It's not how we're built. So unless we start getting some information on things that are working, like the malaria drug, isn't it interesting that the, that the mainstream media isn't talking about the malaria drug and some of the successes that are that are leaking out that that ABC hasn't done this big 2020 special on the malaria drug that that may indeed end this crisis you know why they're not talking about it because Donald Trump mentioned it on his uh, you know what during a press conference that should give you reason to pause something I'll think it is that should give you reason to pause um, the Chinese wet markets are open. This is a picture of a wet market. A wet market is basically uh, primarily a seafood market that sells live fish and live seafood, eels, um, sh shellfish. Um, so you can get them super fresh, right? Um, so they're wet markets. And um, they also, in these wet markets, sell uh, wild animals. They sell things that, in, in the wet markets, what used to happen was that in China, the, the pork and beef and chicken industry was basically, it was basically run by large corporations. And the small towns and small farmers found a niche in wild animal, things that in the, in, here in the United States we call game animals. Um, deer and just sort of offshoots of animals, um, and for them, and, and in in their markets, they think about food differently. Than we think about food. Uh, they think about pets a little differently. Than we think about pets. Um, bats work, rats work, dogs, cats work. Um, meat is you know, and, and honestly, meat is meat. And if the choice is starving or eating then you eat right and and for us you know the whole idea i mean we make horrible jokes about chinese food being um being cat food literally food made from cats but in china and in especially rural china uh, meat is meat we don't they don't have the same frankly ridiculous relationship with animals as we do in this country um they just don't, and it's understandable. There's a billion people there, so the so these wet markets 
are places for all of these things to exist, as you can see in this picture. There we go. There's uh, some shellfish there and sea fish. I mean, sea seafood there, uh, and they kill it right there, chop it up for you. Uh, and but it's a it's, it's a horrific place because it's really easy for disease to spread from and jump from animal uh, from animal to human. It's really easy for that to happen in these markets, uh, and they had shut them down, but they're back open again. They are back open again. And again, that's that's problematical. It's problematical. Uh, because in Wuhan, this is where this virus that we're dealing with now, we, they've traced it back to a market that looks like the picture I showed you in Wuhan, China. Uh, the coronavirus was, was born in a wet market in Wuhan, China, where bats, turtles, and other wild animals are cooked up for human consumption. These markets are, quote, wet, in so much as they are flowing with animal blood and who knows what else. The workers in these markets lack proper hygiene to prevent disease transmission from animals to humans. Um, so this cross-contamination is also the things that are possible there. Some of the deadliest viruses have emerged from human contact with animals, including bird flu, SARS, and of course, coronavirus. Um, China has recently reopened the wet market in Wuhan, in Wuhan, while the rest of the world continues to be ravaged by the deadly virus uh, that 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 particular wet market unleashed upon the world. Now think about this. As the mainstream media is extolling the virtues of how China is handling this and how badly President Trump is handling this, where the scientists, not Trump but or Lindsey Graham, but the scientists have said that this is the genesis the the nexus of this virus and this is why it happened that very same com that country that the mainstream media is lauding has opened this market again and people here in florida are mad that people are meeting at church that are going to church um, on sunday morning and meeting in groups of, of, of more than 10. yeah little upside down what you think um, I thought this was, I thought this was funny. I, I, I think it's that, uh, maybe the good Senator has his heart in the right place. Uh, however, oh, I'll, I'll, screw it. I'll, I'll, I'll let you watch it. Uh, as part of their diet, we need to stop that as the 21st century. What I would tell president Trump is to call up president Xi and say, listen, you just reopened the wet market in Wuhan where, where we believe all this came from. Crack down on bringing exotic and wild animals uh, into these wet markets where they contaminate the food supply and human beings. Bats yeah. carry this stuff and they literally eat bats. Stop eating bats. Well, and, and if that's not a meme, if that's not a meme coming, I don't know what is. Stop eating bats. It's the 21st century. Stop eating bats. <sighs> That's awful. That is terrible. I understand the senator's frustration because this is this is really. I mean, th l l let's be adult for a minute. Stop eating bats. Um, <laughs> but when we're talking about where these kind of things start and how they kick off. And how people travel around the planet, and especially because so many um, Chinese people are becoming well-to-do and are able now to travel around the planet. It's easy to take these viruses, these, this, these, these bacterium or whatever, and distribute it wildly throughout Europe and wildly throughout the rest of the planet. Imagine... If some horrible virus was found in a market in San Francisco and President Trump said it was okay for that market where we found the virus or bacterium to reopen, imagine. 
it be similar to the reaction that that people are having here where i live that governor DeSantis has has said by executive order that uh, churches church services religious services are essential activities and for those of us right now who are in the throes of this yeah we know they're essential activities but it's more than but it's, it's more than that but it's an essential activity people are some people are freaking out freaking out but they but they're silent on china um reopening these wet markets where the where the disease actually flipping started are you serious are you serious? I guess they are. Remember, um, this program is brought to you, uh, brought to us, um, because of two great companies. First, the first of them is Guthrie's Computer Plus in Brandon, Florida, one zero eight West Windhorse Road, eight one three six eight five four four three two. My friend Chuck is the best. He's gonna. He's you know what? When you go to, you know, we've I've seen a bunch of these computer places come and go large and small we've seen them all we saw computer city we saw um, we saw all these places that um were dominating the the computer landscape and um computer renaissance and we saw a lot of them and all through that what i saw was the little engine that could i saw a, a guy who was super talented fair cared about his community, cared about his customers, did quality work, and was going to win. And a lot of them have built huge edifices, and now they're gone. Chuck's in the same place, doing the same thing, helping people out. I was just there a couple days ago. I managed to mess up my keyboard, and I, and I, I said, listen, dude, I know that you know we're under lockdown, we're under coronavirus, um, but I need your help. He said, come on in. And sure enough, I jacked it up pretty bad. <laughs> and he said, yeah, you really did. And I said, well, you know, you're the only guy that I know who can take this back here, put your hands on it and fix it. And he did. Why? Because he's that kind of guy. So if you're in the Tampa Bay area, you're in the Brandon area, if you're anywhere around and, and you need um, computer services, Guthrie's Computer Plus in Brandon. Again, 108 West Windhorse Road. Uh, the number there is 813-685-4432. Now, my other girl is Christine Vasconcello at Blooming Days Flower Shop. Blooming Days Flower Shop. It's 11618 North Florida Avenue here in Tampa, Florida. Uh, www.bloomingdays.com uh, If you want a flower arrangement um, that's over 100 bucks, you can get $10 off just by putting in the coupon at the website 10-off-flowers that's F-L-R-W uh, R-W, flower, yeah um, check it out go to the website, you'll see the code there um, Christine has always been a, a help and a supporter of basically every project that I've ever done uh, so she, since she again is someone else who can, who really cares about her community and her customers. And if um, Palm Sunday is coming up, Palm Sunday is coming up. So if you you want blessed palms, she has blessed palms that you can put out in front of your house. Just go by, just go by, and and, and they're practicing social distancing at her shop. Uh, give her a ring before you come over. Someone will come. Someone will come outside. And um, help you with it. There you go. Uh, you can pay online and come by and pick your stuff up and still be within all the social distancing guidelines. Blooming Days Flower Shop, my friend Christine Vasconcello. Thank you so much. Thank you, Chuck. Love you, man. All right. Um, Got to talk about one more thing here before we let you go. Um, there's this cry for... Uh, an online system, just a pure online system of voting um, to keep people from coming too close to an, to one another. Now, I talked about it a little earlier in the open that it, it, it's just, it seems like, wait, 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 wait. I don't think this is going to be necessary. A lot of people already vote absentee as it is. 
I don't think that everybody, everybody should have to vote absentee. And I definitely don't agree with the next thing that we're going to talk about, this thing called ballot harvesting that um, people on the left primarily want to expand. Now, what's interesting about ballot harvesting is that the case I'm going to show you doesn't involve somebody on the left necessarily. It involves a Republican in North Carolina. But this is evidence of how ballot harvesting is not necessarily the best idea. And maybe we can find a way that we could all go to the polls. Uh, I think that that's probably the best idea, but that's just me not being stupid. Um, the clip is from the folks at um, J Judicial Watch. You'll enjoy this. Now, another big issue out in California, and it's one in North Carolina as well, where a Republican candidate, uh, there's going to be a new election for a Republican, uh, excuse me, for a congressional seat in North Carolina because it looks like a Republican operative had illegally gathered ballots and they suppressed them because as a result of the, the illegal gathering of ballots, which has caused the result, called, uh, called the results of the election into dispute. So they're going to be brand new election thanks to ballot harvesting, which is a felony in North Carolina. In, North, in California, though, the law has been changed to allow it to take place. And ballot harvesting is legalized fraud, in my view, because there are almost no sufficient checks in place to make sure that you give someone a ballot, it's actually, it's actually voted upon or actually moved. Uh, you know, uh, in theory, the ballot harvester goes around, collects ballots, delivers it to the polling place to be counted. Well, you got to hope that happens, but there's no guarantee it happens. And I don't believe the checks are in place in California to make sure that happens. Legalized fraud, legalized opportunity for fraud. I don't know how you want to put it, but it's a mess. I know a lot of you are concerned about it. And trust me that we are initiating a significant investigation into ballot harvesting in California. And I'm going to have more on that next week for you. But we're not forgetting about it. We're not forgetting about it. And this is addition to our concerns about aliens illegally voting, huge numbers in Texas potentially, numbers in Pennsylvania. Tens of millions of aliens are here in the United States, both legal and otherwise. A certain percentage of them register to vote, and a certain percentage vote. It stands to reason. The only question is how many. And I think even just one illegal alien voting or one alien illegally voting is too many. And Judicial Watch is on top of that. So I'm proud to say there's probably no other group like Judicial Watch out there trying to uphold the rule of law to ensure that your elections are fair and f clean and are, your votes aren't stolen. So you can see how this works, right? You can see how that works. Again, it's, it's, it's ironic that the case against ballot harvesting was not done by a wide-eyed leftist. It was done by a, it was done by a Republican, not, not necessarily a conservative, but a Republican, which sort of opens up the, uh, the thought that look what can happen. Look what can happen. So maybe ballot harvesting shouldn't be allowed. There's I mean, there's absolutely no checks and balances here in Florida. I remember it was a, it, it was a big deal when, um, th to get third party people to go out and register people to vote that you couldn't just go out as an individual or as a, as a group of people and start registering people to vote. Why? Because you could just go down to the, the, the SOE and get a bunch of applications and then fill them out. Fill them out and turn them in. With no with SOE having no guarantee that the that these that these applications for voter registrations were were real. There was no checks and balances. Nobody knew who anybody was. And at the same time, not requiring not requiring ID for people to vote. It's 
does that make any sense that you would have a system that would have that big opening in it? You know, I, it'd be like if you were, if you went to the bank and instead of having to ask the teller, um, uh, for the money, they just had a bag of money out there in front of the teller window and you could just, and the teller said, yes, sir, get your $119 out of the bag, sir. And you just reached in and grab $119. Some people would only get 119. Some people would get 120. Some people would take the whole damn bag. Why would you do it that way if you knew that there was a better way to do it? If there was a way to prevent fraud and theft that you could do that really wouldn't uh, cause anybody to lose their rights at all, that you could do it better. Why wouldn't you do it that way? Why would you choose on purpose to do things the most dangerous way possible and just hope that everything was going to be okay? This whole idea of everybody voting by mail is the same deal. Why would you do that? Ballots coming in from God knows where and God knows who. Let me tell you a um, real quick before I have to go, because we have to go here in a little bit, uh, what happens sometimes here in Florida, because Florida is, you know, we are, we have a lot of old people because sometimes the voter rolls aren't as clean as they should be and they don't coordinate with other systems. So we have grandma who has been voting by mail the past 10 elections because she doesn't get, she doesn't get out as well as, as she used to. She just sits home and watches Fox News, right? Now, her grandson, who moves into her apartment or condo, um, notices that grandma votes by mail. Now, he's a wide-eyed liberal, progressive, that cringes every time that grandma votes because grandma's basically canceling out his vote and vice versa. Well, the time comes. Grandma dies. The grandson is cleaning up the, uh, the, the condo. He sees the mail on the counter. Grandma has received her mail-in ballot. The SOE doesn't know yet that Grandma has died. So, so grandson fills it out. Forges grandma's name. Puts in the envelope. Now, what you just heard from me was, was a dramatization. But you know damn well it happens. It may not happen that way, but you know damn well it happens. You know, people who are in assistant living facilities, people who are in memory care centers, who get absentee ballots that get filled out by other people. We don't know how or where or, or where they come from, but they get turned in. It's not, there's no way to check. There's no way to know. They say that they've got that safeguards against these things, but it's somebody who looks at a signature who isn't necessarily um, someone who can analyze, who has the credentials to analyze a signature. It's like your, you know, your fourth grade teacher looking at your signature and comparing it to your mother's. If there's a big difference, they can catch it. And if not, they can't catch it. So why have a system? So people, and people will tell you all the time, well, you know what? There isn't any evidence of that. But why have a system that you, that you know has these big gaps in it if you don't have to, and it doesn't take away anybody's right if you do it correctly, that it actually secures the system. Locking my front door doesn't take away anybody's rights. It just makes me safer. Nobody has a right to come into my home without me inviting them in. So if I lock my front door, that's a good policy for me because it protects my home and the people in it and it doesn't keep anybody it doesn't invade anybody else's rights or rights does it 
So if I know that's a good idea to do, then I should do that. My name is Willie Lawson. This is Fight Back 2020. We got to get out of here. Again, thank you ever so much. Thank you to Blooming Days Flower Shop. Thank you to, to um, Guthrie's Computer Plus. Uh, make sure that you uh, check out our sponsors. We're going to do more of these as we are sequestered in our homes. Uh, maybe this will be a good thing that came out of this. You know, I felt I, I felt kind of like Ben Shapiro for a minute. I should be wearing a yarmulke. No, I shouldn't be wearing a yarmulke. Um, but I felt like I feel like Ben. He's smarter than me, but I'm cuter. In any case, until we see you again, go out there and learn something, love somebody, and for goodness sakes, y'all take care of yourself. Until we see you again, peace.